Three things you should never mix with the Ordinary's AHA BHA peel. While we do the Ordinary's AHA BHA peel, this is one of the best things that I found over the counter because it is the most potent chemical peel that you can get without a professional license. This is so good. It is one of my favorites and I use it on the regs. However, some people use it incorrectly and some people end up mixing things either with it or directly before or directly after this that are a terrible idea. And I believe in you. I believe that you're a skin intellectual. Can you actually guess? what some of those things are. Like, think about it. It's okay to be wrong. That's how we learn, right? So leave a comment and let's see if you're right. We're gonna start by opening this and putting it on dry skin, which is also essential. And I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. Here we go. Oh, I love this stuff. I'm actually starting off with my T-zone because that's where I get the oiliest and I get some blackheads and sebaceous filaments. So let's deal with that. If you guessed retinoids, AKA vitamin A, you are correct. Retinoids are something that you should probably avoid either directly before or directly after using the AHA BHA peel. Again, this is a potent peel and you can do this maybe once a month, maybe once a week if you're super, super attuned to it. More than that can be a lot. And the acids in this product work by breaking down the bonds between our skin cells, as well as help exfoliating off some of those dead skin cells directly. Well, retinoids don't exfoliate, but they do speed up skin cell turnover. And unfortunately, retinoids can be a little bit irritating. They can cause something called retinization, which is basically the redness and the itchiness that comes along with starting them. Now, if you're really used to them in your routine and you've been using them for years, you can probably pause them for a day while you do a peel like this. In general, because retinoids can irritate the skin and because exfoliants can be really intense on the skin, you wanna avoid layering retinoids with this peel, specifically right before or right after. Now, of course that means prescription retinoids. That even means retinol or retinal. Those can still be pretty intense. If you're a super advanced user, you know your skin best. Make sure you always patch test. When in doubt, do not layer or do not mix these because you don't wanna overwhelm your skin. We're trying to exfoliate. We don't wanna confuse it by speeding up skin cells turnover and causing irritation at the same time. The next thing you're not going to want to mix is contrary to the opinion of the internet, not vitamin C. A lot of people think they can't use vitamin C. There's a catch to this. You don't want to mix or layer this peel with L-ascorbic acid, which yes, is a form of vitamin C that is prone to degradation and can actually kind of sting the skin. Now there are other forms of vitamin C that can actually work with a peel if your skin is really advanced. In general, you don't want to mix this with most vitamin Cs and especially not L-ascorbic acid. Is it going to do anything major? No, at most it could probably really sting and irritate the skin, you could get a little bit of redness and flushing, which is not fun. It's definitely not as bad as putting this over microneedling the skin, which yes, some people on TikTok did. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. <sighs> TikTok is just unhinged at this point. It's not a good idea to use this over L-ascorbic acid, that really potent form of vitamin C that's, that's a little bit unstable. Usually when you do this, because it is an exfoliant, you want to do this in the evening or when you're going to be out of the sun. And L-ascorbic acid, vitamin C, can be used morning or evening, but it's better to use that during the day because you get the antioxidant benefits to work with your sunscreen. If you do this, the next morning you may want to skip the vitamin C if your skin is still sensitive, or if you've really built up skin tolerance and you can handle it, just give it a good eight to 10 hours, again, like sleeping overnight to make sure that you're not overwhelming your skin. A lot of people use this because they have acne, whether that's blackheads or whiteheads, and this can be fantastic for acne over the counter. But a lot of people try to mix this with benzoyl peroxide, or you're supposed to apply this to clean skin, right? So some people will wash their face with a benzoyl peroxide wash, and then put this on. While that's not a cardinal sin, it's probably not a good idea if your skin isn't used to it. It's not a big no-no, it's not a red light. It's kind of that yellow light. It's like, hey, let's slow down. If your skin is sensitive and if it's prone to dryness, don't use a benzoyl peroxide wash before washing this. But if your doctor or derm recommends it, or if you know that benzoyl peroxide and acids like salicylic acid work for your skin, then proceed with caution. Another thing to proceed with caution is sunscreen. You're probably thinking, what? Yeah, you don't wanna use this and then immediately apply a chemical sunscreen. Now you're probably thinking, Sandra, what the f because aren't we supposed to use sunscreen to protect our skin, especially after we exfoliate? Yes, if you understand, this is literally breaking down the dead skin cells and the glue that holds them together. It's not really glue, it's desmosomes and basically oils and dead skin. But we wanna break that down and kind of slough it off. If we use chemical sunscreens, they aren't irritating to everyone, but some people, especially those who have sensitive skin, can be super sensitive to things like avobenzone or oxybenzone. You don't want to use those directly after a chemical peel. If you're thinking that you're gonna use this and then put on a chemical sunscreen 30 minutes later and walk outside, I would say skip that idea completely and just use this at night. I wanna make it clear, you do need to use a sunscreen if you have this in your routine, you absolutely do, but it's not a good idea to do one and then the other just in case of irritation. But again, that's kind of the yellow light. What is the last big red flag, the big no-no, the big kahuna? The biggest thing is that you do want to avoid other acids and you wanna know which ones. For instance, hyaluronic acid is totally fine because that's not an exfoliating acid, but something like glycolic acid or more salicylic 
salicylic acid you absolutely want to avoid because even though this says AHA, BHA, AHAs are things like glycolic acid and BHA is salicylic acid. So you don't wanna be using this and then use a salicylic acid cream or use a salicylic acid moisturizer and totally double up. This is potent and unless you've tested it, unless your skin is really resilient or unless a professional has recommended it directly to you, you don't wanna do more than you have to. And this is why turning and learning these ingredients are so important. If you don't know, which again you do because you're a skin intellectual and you're subscribed, but for a lot of other people who don't know that BHA is the same as salicylic acid or that tartaric acid or mandelic acid is an AHA, they might use this BHA AHA peel and think, oh, I'm gonna use a salicylic acid moisturizer. I'm gonna use a glycolic acid toner. No, 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 no. We don't wanna double up on acids. This is a lot. And we don't wanna burn our skin off more than intended, which is why I'm gonna go wash this off. Tell me if you were right or wrong in the comments and let me know if there's other ordinary products that you're curious about and you wanna know what you should or shouldn't mix. And if you do have a question about mixing skincare, you can literally type into the search bar, Cassandra Bankson mixing the ordinary or Cassandra Bankson ingredients not to mix. And I've actually tagged some of my favorite products right here that are safe to use alongside this. Always proceed with caution, always patch test because everyone's skin is different and always put this on dry skin, which I haven't always done and always wash this off after 10 minutes. I've left it on for longer and I've regretted it sometimes, even though I've been using this for literal years. I'm gonna go wash this off. You stay hydrated, reapply that SPF, hopefully not 30 minutes after you use this, but like a good eight hours after and always be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I can't wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Bye!